Listen, folks, this video is going to be tremendous. Believe me, I'm going to show you how to take your videos to the next level using the most incredible tools out there, Automatic 1111 Temporal Kit and EBSynth along with ControlNet 1.1. Now, you need to make sure you have the latest versions of ControlNet and Temporal Kit installed, folks. And don't forget to download EBSynth. I've got the links in the description for you. In this video, we're going to be using Tosuku's Chillomix model and a video from Pexels.com. Let me tell you, this process works like magic on face close-ups. It's unbelievable. All right, let's get started. First, open Automatic 1111 and head over to your Temporal Kit tab. Drag your input video file into Temporal Kit, folks. And let me tell you, I always use a resolution of 1024 times 1024 for optimal performance on my RTX 3070T. First, change the slides value to 1 and the resolution to 1024. Leave the frames per keyframe at 5 and the FPS at 30. And don't forget to tick the EBSynth box, folks. Copy and paste the folder path of your project folder into the target folder field. Then open the batch settings drop down and enable batch run. Then set your max keyframes. It's simple, just count 30 keyframes for every second of your video. Now this is where it gets exciting, folks. With the upgraded version of Temporal Kit, we can tick the split video option and let Temporal Kit do the work for us. No need to cut videos into smaller bits in Premiere Pro anymore. Hit run and watch as Temporal Kit breaks down our video into four pieces and creates a separate folder for each one. Each folder contains a frame folder, an input folder, a keys folder, and an output folder you can ignore the results folder. In the newly created input folder, you'll find the frames that we're gonna process with the image to image option, folks. Now let's head over to the image to image tab. The first thing we gotta do is try different prompt settings until we get consistent results. I've got a prompt already prepared. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be long. And don't forget to insert your negative keywords, they're very important. Once you're done, you got to open that first input folder created by Temporal Kit and drag that first image right into that upload field. And let me tell you, since our input had a resolution of 1024 times 1024, we got to change those parameters, okay? Now let's turn down the denoising. That value controls how much the result can deviate from your image input. If you set the denoising strength to zero, you won't get any changes at all. But if you set it to one, it'll be completely different from the original. We'll start with 0.3. The CFG scale, folks, this is important. It's going to determine how much weight we put on that prompt. The higher the CFG scale, the more it'll try to stick to the prompts and lead to unclean results. I usually go for CFG scales between 4 and 7. Now we've got to input our seed so that every image has the same seed. You can choose any number you want, or if you're feeling lucky, use the dice button for a random seed. I always go for 137. Once that's done, let's head over to the ControlNet tab. If you don't have ControlNet installed, check out the link in the description, okay? Click that Enable button and activate Guest Mode. For this process, we need the OpenPose and Canny models. Let's select that OpenPose preprocessor and model and turn down the weight to 0.55. Next, we got to do the same thing for Canny on the second tab. Enable it, enable Guest Mode, choose the Canny processor and model, and turn that weight down to 0.55 as well. Finally, it's time to generate some images. But before we go into batch mode, we got to make sure our prompt and settings are just right. I already really like my first result, so now I'm going to take another frame that looks different from the first one and generate an image with that. We need to make sure our output is consistent, okay? If that denoising value is too high, the same character can look differently on one frame to another. For our purpose, we need the character to look the same on every frame, which is why we went for a lower denoising strength. And let me tell you, that second frame looks great too, so we're ready for batch processing. Hit that Batch Processing tab and let Automatic 1111 generate images in batches. Instead of dragging them in separately, define an input folder and an output folder. If you hit Run, it'll process each picture from the input folder and put those generated images in the output folder. And there you have it, folks. You can now see your output folder being populated with generated images. Once all the images have been generated, head back over to Temporal Kit and go to the EBSynth Process tab. So you need to copy the path of the folder that contains all your input, output, and other files and paste it in the designated field. Then hit Read Last Settings to get the correct video settings and click Prepare EBSynth. After that, open EBSynth and drag the Keys folder into the Keyframes field 
and the Frames folder into the Video field in Absinthe. If your video is small enough, Absinthe will recognize the correct parameters automatically. If it doesn't, you'll have to set them up yourself or make your videos shorter. Once Absinthe is done, you'll see a bunch of new output folders in your root directory. Now click Recombine Absinthe in Temporal Kit, and it will use those folders to create a cross-faded video. But wait, we're not done yet. If you chose the Split Video option, you'll need to repeat this process for the other videos. Just go back to the Image to Image tab, open the Batch Settings again, and change the Input and Output directory to the second folder. In my case, I changed the folder from 0 to 1. Then run Automatic 1111 again to populate the second output folder. Once the second output folder is generated, go back to Temporal Kit and Absinthe Process. Remove the previous video by clicking on the little X and replace the input folder with the one where you just generated the new frames. Hit Prepare Absinthe again and drag the new keys and frames into Absinthe. Run it and click Recombine Absinthe to get the second part of the video. Repeat this process for any additional folders. In my case, I had to do it four times. Finally, open all the parts in your preferred video software and put them together. That's it. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.